Welcome back to the series of automotive cybersecurity sessions. I am Dr. Krishna Hema, your automotive consultant. So in this video, we are going to discuss about automotive vehicle networking and how the impact on cybersecurity of the vehicle. So imagine that you are driving a car, okay, and you know there are hundreds of ECUs in your car which are connected with each other. Since it is, since all those ECUs are inside one car as a subsystems, so these networking is called intranetworking, inside networking, that means which is called as intranetwork. So connectivity within the car, which means, okay, and we can easily plot high level intra network topology that is by representing each ECU as a node and connectivity as a branches. Now consider your smart car needs internet connectivity. That means you are open to multiple sources like facing or you know you can you you are uh, for baiting uh, for all kinds of internet threats and how about your OEM server connectivity? Uh, how about uh, your uh, vehicle tele telematics uh, server connectivity or the OEM server connectivity? Oh, uh, how about uh, other car connectivity? How about interoperability like USBs, Bluetooth? Uh, so all kinds of this connectivity, device connectivities. And imagine the big picture of the, this entire networking. Also consider the weakness discussed about embedded software. So since embedded software is a very small software, means like, you know, it, it can be flashed in a small uh, memory. That means like, you know, we cannot accommodate a cybersecurity software to be available in each and every ECUs. So this is a... Uh, thing and now you got into a real complexity of protecting automotive um, networking from cyber attacks considering all these things first thing is intra networking and inter networking that means we to x networking so we will discuss in detail and the internet connectivity as well so all these things we need to consider and we need to build a proper security cyber security in place the first category here i'm going to explain is in vehicle communication this comes under internal communication or intra network communication control area network or can network is a uh, protocol bus protocol that means a protocol is nothing but a rule okay and it is a bus protocol that enables the communication between in vehicle ecs this is a famous uh, network protocol uh, like which is common across uh, the all all the vehicle communications so a part of can like we have lin gps uart these things in place in in uh, inside a vehicle okay and the data which is exchanged between these ecus via can network can be used to exchange information uh, configure and also control that means in between the easy use like how uh, they transfer the data with each other and how they can could be able to communicate with each other uh, by passing information or by controlling by sending control signals to each other or you know by forming a feedback loop in order to communicate in order to control the ECU something like this in some cases Plexray or Ethernet may, might also be used for the in-vehicle networking. So OBD, onboard diagnostics, which tracks and regulates vehicle performance and it prevents manipulation by external signals. So this comes under, this is an internal internal device, so OBD2 uh, connectivity. So this, this will be inside your car and which will be communicating through communicating to the external sources so that means it, it comes under in it comes under external networking also because it is inside the car like i have mentioned it as inside networking so next thing is connected with device communication or interoperability like usbs bluetooth 
and all other this kind of devices and internet connectivity we consider and also the vehicle telematics like uh, the telematics like uh, the driving data uh, will be connected in telematic control unit through can lin gps uart etc and it and all will get stored in this tcu and once the tcu gets connected gets the internet connectivity so this the, it will send the data to the cloud server and the server data can be accessible in phone or web app anytime so this is how like you know this vehicle telematics would be very helpful in case of lead management and also like you know uh, finding out uh, a vehicle for the service something like this okay like to track the vehicle or you know um, or is also at the time of accidents and all like you know how this accident occurred like for the causal analysis also this information is very much required vehicle connectivity this vehicle connectivity to the external world so what sort of vehicle connectivity we, dis we described before is like v2v that is vehicle to vehicle communication and v2i that is vehicle to infrastructure communication and these networking could be bucketized together as v2x that means vehicle to everything network so v2x networks will enhance autonomous features like collision avoidance or lane departure a warning or lane keeping assistance we can say and vehicle safety traffic management these all things we can uh, uh, we can experience through this v2x v2x networks this can be improvised better through v2x networks and the next thing is infotainment devices in the vehicle so which needs internet connectivity to download the media to download uh, uh, the mp3s and all intelligent charging so all smart cars needs charging nowadays because of the elect electron electrical vehicles so these vehicles during this charging stations or charging points like you know that the vehicle will get will exchange of communication in between the charging station intelligent charging means like it will exchange some information this is trustworthy in general by oems these stations will be organized by OEMs so that is the reason like you know it is trustworthy it is termed as trustworthy but we need to ensure on cyber security of these things as well during charging like you know somebody can can install a bug in your uh, there is a threat there is a vulnerability during the charging also and what are software software updates that is over the air software updates like uh, the software patches which will be released by the OEM and which will be downloadable by uh, the internet connectivity so all these above mentioned uh, connectivities like external vehicle communication or connectivity will happen through the internet either by hotspot or wi-fi so how uh, the cyber security in autonomous network should happen so because you know uh, we have come across the multiple networking things and you know, like you know first of all this uh, um, internet protocols or you know this uh, having an ip address or these kind of uh, things will come under the so normal cyber security things but a part of normal cyber security practices what we should do as a autonomous aut autonomous cyber security or automotive cyber security so the first thing is integrating networks with firewalls to avoid uh, unauthenticated access unauthenticated access is something like which doesn't follow which comes under a particular process which comes under like whether this owner is accessing it or not for example like you know by uh, by uh, biometrics or by you know asking some security questions here it is uh, like uh, sso did you did you hear this like single sign on so single sign on is uh, nothing but it is a common sign in sign on process uh, for multiple applications of the organization similarly like if we integrate network with the proper firewalls like we can avoid unauthenticated access the second thing is masking communication through uh, data encryption data encryption is like you know uh, the conversion of the data into um, 
into either like you know bitwise uh, zero ones or one zeros or you know some random random digits numbers so however like you know uh, the system feels like the uh, this uh, computer or you know this particular ecu feels it comfortable uh, so like data encryption happens like uh, there, there are certain rules for the data encryption so in order to decrypt it also so like when you read that encrypted data you can't get anything out of it so that's the reason like we have to mask the communication signals with uh, data encryption and the third one is authenticated communication by blocking communication from unauthorized devices so first point is like unauthenticated or unauthorized access from people this is about unauthorized devices so hope you got this concept so don't forget to subscribe my channel also hit on the notification bell to for new videos also thank you so much for your time